All right, good afternoon, everyone. It is now 1.25, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, the first problem we are going to be doing today is 4-12. So let me share my screen here. All right, so the first problem reads, the two small spheres, each of mass m, and their connecting rod of negligible mass are rotating about their mass center g with an angular velocity omega. The same instant, the mass center has a velocity v in the x direction. Determine the angular momentum, HO, of the assembly at the instant when G has coordinates of X and Y. All right, um, so we're gonna be looking for HO. That is the number one thing that we'll be paying attention to. And at instant when G has coordinates of X and Y. So G is the center of gravity of the um, system right here. Um, and when it has the coordinates X and Y. So this is basically at any time. Um, so we are just going to be looking for an expression of HO. All right, so um, angular momentum is based on the velocity. And um, it looks like we're going to have to find the velocity of these two different balls um, spinning at this angular velocity here. And also the system G, since it has a velocity itself in the x direction. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with, we'll call this one A and this one would be uh, yeah the, these two balls here all right um so let's start with the velocity so we'll go velocity of a with respect to g we're going to keep everything with respect to g so we can um just add up all of the different momentums at the end um so that is going to be equal to omega cross r and r here uh, well, omega here is going to be equal to omega in the k direction cross r, r, and that is going to be split into two segments, cosine theta i plus sine Oh boy. Sine theta j. Um, and I put this little snippet from Newton's second law up here just so that you guys could have that um, to keep all of your signs straight. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and uh, do this. Then we're going to come out with negative omega k. My omegas are going to look a little bit like w's. It's hard to get a good omega um, using a mouse. Um, and then that is going to be cosine j plus sine theta. Oop, I forgot a theta here. Um, yeah, just know that has a theta right there. Sine theta i. All right, and now we're going to go to mass uh, b. So velocity of B with respect to G, and this should come out with a very similar answer to A here. And that's gonna be um, omega cross R again. And this omega is gonna be the same, omega in the K direction, cross R, but this time R is gonna be positive cosine theta in the i direction minus sine theta in the j direction, uh, j, okay. And that is gonna come out to be omega r, oh, wait a minute. I just realized I messed up a little bit here. Is going to be omega r actually. Omega r cosine j plus sine theta j. And you might look at these two and say, hmm, why are they the same? Um, well, actually, they're not. They're, there's a subtraction here, but um, these balls are going to have the same. Um, 
terms and uh, expressions for their angular velocity since they're doing the same thing rotating about g at any given time. All right, so then let's go find, go ahead and find the momentum at the mass center g. So go over here, h, oh wait a minute. Um, yeah, so now we're gonna take this these velocities and um, switch them to angular momentums. So h a g equal to you should have equations similar to this in Dr. Miri's notes. That's where I got these. M b a g. So we're just gonna um, plug in what we use for r for the a g. Well, we can call this r a g here too. Um, so that's going to be this um, cross the mass times the velocity, which is going to be this, this whole term here. All right, so H is going to be equal to R negative cosine theta I plus sine theta j cross negative m w r cosine hi dr mary hey mark how are you i just copied your link because uh, i had another meeting oh okay uh yeah no one's showed up yet so i just started ahead on this um on the first problem yeah. that's good okay um, should I wait sure. to continue for anyone else to show up? Let me send this one through to make sure that at least both classes they have the link. Give me a second. Okay. Okay, that's good. 412. This is an interesting problem. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. the concept. Yeah, just a slightly, when they join, just you can say a summary in less than one minute and then continue. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah, hopefully they, they join. If no, I'll just continue and continue recording, then I share the video with them. But thank you, Mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I started recording about 10 minutes ago or okay. eight minutes ago. Great. Okay, yeah. great. Oh, you just left. All right. Um, I'm going to wait two minutes. So uh, skip ahead two minutes on the video.
Okay, it should have been about two minutes by now. So, um, so now here we have an expression for the angular momentum um, for mass A right here. Um, and let me move this out of the way. And we're just gonna move this up, keep that. Um, yeah, just making some room for this next little part here. Keep that. Okay. All right, so now we have uh, this expression for mass A, and I'm going to continue and write the expression for mass B now. Okay, so we have the same thing, basically. So we're going to be the radius of B with respect to G cross M times the velocity of B with respect to G. Okay, and that is all going to equal to R times the cosine theta i. Um, and back at the beginning, I said we were going to need to have a velocity um, of g, but that is... Hey, Zach, how's it going? Um, I am... Uh, you're the first person to join, so I'll just give you a rundown of the problem I'm doing right now. Um, so basically, we're looking for the um, angular momentum. Um, of H with respect to G. So that's going to be this uh, gravitational point here, or not gravitational, um, just like the center of mass point here of this system, and it looks like it's spinning. So this mass, be labeled A, is going down at omega. I don't know if you can see this omega right here, but um, it's spinning at omega, and so is B. Um, so we made velocity vectors using Newton's second law. Um, and then now we are doing the angular momentums of each of A and B. Um, and this whole system is moving at a velocity V in the X direction. And we are gonna be um, looking for an expression since it only asks for H at coordinates X and Y. So it's just a general expression. All right, um, so I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna put this up on YouTube later so you can watch it. Um, let me continue on with this expression. All right, and then it's going to be minus sine theta in the j direction cross m omega r times the cosine theta in the j direction plus sine theta in the i direction. Okay, so that's a big one, but then that can be simplified just like this one was simplified to simply m omega r squared k. So now you can tell that both mass a and b um, have the same rotational uh, angular momentum. Um, so now, let me get rid of some of this stuff. This. Just making room for the next part. It's getting messy. All right, move that up here. Um, move that up there. Okay, and then now we're going to have to find the angular momentum at the center of mass G here. So um, we go H G is going to be equal to R G cross 2 times the mass, since this is going to be of the whole system here, times the velocity at G. So you'll notice there's no angular um, velocity going at G since G is the whole entire system going in a straight line. And the center of mass is always going to be at G. 
All right, so then that's going to simplify to 2m since this is going to cancel. Um, x in the i direction plus y in the j direction cross velocity right here. And then that's going to simplify to negative 2 m v y k. So that is our angular momentum um, in the for g. Okay. So now we have all of those different expressions and I'm just going to get rid of everything, make some room because now we have to balance equations. Okay. Um, does anyone have any, shoot, I shouldn't have deleted. Okay. Does anyone have any questions on this so far? Is there more than one person in here? Oh yeah. Hi Colin. How's it going? Um, hey, so basically we just did 412. Um, I'm going to put this up on YouTube later. So uh, Dr. Me, I'll send you a link about it. But basically we just found the velocities um, since we're looking for the momentum of the whole system. Um, and then from these velocities, we found the momentum of each ball. And then we just found the momentum of G here. Um, and now we're going to use all those three parts to find the momentum of the system. Okay, um, so if you remember, momentum is conserved. So the momentum at O should be, O is the center of mass, um, should be all of these added together. H, that's a good H. Um, A with respect to G plus H B with respect to G. All right, I'll throw that in a little comma there. Um, so these two are going to be the same. So it's going to be two times whatever um, these were. So uh, basically, we're just going to say this uh, momentum there. H O is going to be equal to negative two m v y k plus two times m omega r squared k. Okay, um, so then h o, this can all be simplified. You can take out the m, you can take out, actually that's it, you can only take out the m. Um, so it's gonna be negative two m, Actually, no, we can take out that negative two. Uh, we'll just swap it. So 2m times omega r squared minus vy times k. And yeah, so we, we're going to put k at the end just because we're showing that it's going in the k direction. So that should be your final answer for 4-12. Um, I know both of you guys joined in late, but if either of you have any questions about um, any of the last parts I did, I'll give you a minute to think of them or ask them before I move on to the next one. I think I'm good on this problem. Okay. All right, let me grab the next problem then. All right, um, no one has any questions, then we will just move on. All right, so our next problem is 4 19. Let's go over a little bit. All right, um, so this one's kind of cool. It goes um, the man of mass M1 and the woman of mass M2 are standing on opposite ends of the platform of mass MO. So there's three moving parts in this. Um, an MO moves with negligible friction and it is initially at rest with S equals zero. So the position is at zero. The man and woman begin to approach each other. Derive an expression for the displacement S of the platform when the two meet in terms of the displacement X1 
of the man relative to the platform. Okay, so they give us all these variables here. Um, the total length is L. So yeah, they label everything really well here. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, so to derive an expression, we're gonna need to find the initial angular momentum since they give us two different um, scenarios here. Um, so that's gonna give us two expressions, which we can then um, plug into each other um, due to the conservation of momentum. The, the momentum initially is gonna be equal to the momentum at the end. All right, um, so for the initial momentum, it's gonna be described as MIXI is equal to the mass of the man, go to the mass of the man, um, and L plus M2, um, and she's at position zero. So initially this guy is all the way at A, and initially she's all the way here. Um, you, yeah, you can't really see it on the picture here, but that's how they describe it here. All right, um, and then that's gonna be plus the momentum of the platform. And since the center of the mass of the platform is going to be L over two. Okay, so that is our initial momentum equation. Um, and then our final momentum equation is when they meet. So that's going to be MF XF is going to be equal to M1. And this time it's going to be S plus L minus X1. Okay, and then plus M2. Um, if anyone has any questions about how I got this, um, I can go through it with you, but I'm just going to continue on. Um, M2, and that's just going to be the position plus X2. Um, and then for the platform itself, it's going to be plus MO times position plus L over 2. Cool. All right. Um, so then, due to the conservation of momentum, we can write that MF XF is going to be equal to MI XI. Um, so now we can make this side of the equation equal to this side of the equation um, and then solve to find the expression for S, the displacement. All right, um, so we're gonna make this M1 times the length of the platform plus M2 still times zero plus M0 times L over two. And I started with uh, the initial momentum. If you, yeah, I wrote this backwards. Um, and then we're gonna set that equal to mass one times S plus L minus X one plus M two. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so now we're gonna go ahead and simplify this. Uh, yeah, let's throw everything on one side of the equation, um, subtract it out, and then, then we are gonna get M1 times X1 plus M2 um, Okay, and then we're gonna redistribute um, so we can get M1 plus M2 
two. See how we have them all here. Um, plus M O, and we're going to move all of the S since that's what we're trying to find the expression for. We're going to move all of these M one times S, M two times S, and M O times S to the left side of the equation, um, where we multiply them all by S, and then that's going to leave us with these x1s and x2s over here. Um, so that's going to give us m1 x1 minus m2 x2. Okay, and then we can just divide um, this whole thing by m1 plus m2 plus mo. It's going to give us s equals this, I'm just going to grab that, I'm tired of writing. This over M1 plus M2 plus M O. Um, okay, so we could be done here now that we have an expression for S. Um, but there is a way to further simplify this. And I'm just going to get rid of all of this. Um, does anyone need time to copy this? Uh, all right. No one said anything. So this up, this up here. All right. So now we have this equation. Um, but when at the uh, the final momentum, when these two meet, um, that's the final thing they tell us here. Um, we can conclude that this x1 here plus this x2 here are going to equal the total length of the platform. Um, so in order to get this simplified even further, um, we can move this x1 over and have x2 equal to L minus x1. So let me go ahead and plug this into the equation. Have S equal to M x1 minus M2. Um, multiplied by the total length minus x1. So we just plug that in there. All divided by m1 plus m2 plus mo. Um, which we can further simplify by taking out this m1, m2, since now this m2 is multiplied by x1 also. Um, so then we can write it is equal to m1 plus m2 times x1 minus m2 l. And that is still all divided by mass 1 plus mass 2 plus the mass of the platform. And that is all going to be equal to the final displacement. So again, um, you could have ended uh, up here. But um, the answer that they gave me in the book had this expression. So I got here and I was like, huh, like what's, what's going on with that? Again, this is a right answer. This is a right answer. Um, but in the back of the book, they wanted this for some reason. Um, so we just had to do a little bit of like variable manipulation, had to figure out what they were looking for. Um, X1 plus X2 equals L is, I don't know. I, yeah. Does anyone have any questions on this? Um, okay, so I kind of started early today because uh, you guys didn't get the link because Dr. Mirror was in a meeting, um, but here we are now and I am done with um, my two
um, solutions. So what I'm going to do now is put my, um, how do I get to the chat box? All right, I'm going to stop sharing real quick. Okay. Chat. There it is. Okay. So um, I'm going to put in my student email. And if anyone has any questions on the homework, uh, please don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, I'll help you out. I know they're due, I think, Wednesday nights. Um, so let me know. Um, I have a little bit to do after this, but I'll get them back timely. Um, if anyone has any questions in general, please let me know now. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop.